Welcome to the Packard Academy. I'm Rick Streaker, Packard's National Training Coordinator. Today we're going to talk about motors, and more specifically, we're going to talk about air over motors and how these air over motors compare to general purpose motors. That implies air has to move over those motors to keep them cool. It's essential that there is a fan blade or blower wheel attached to the shaft of that motor in order to have air moving over the motor. Without that air moving over the motor, the motor will overheat and fail. But on general purpose motors, that's not essential. You can attach belts to these motors, you can attach gearboxes to these motors, pulleys to these motors. They do not have to have additional air going over the motor to keep it cool. There are significant differences when you're trying to select the proper motor, when you're trying to select the proper replacement air over motor. Now if we look at the name plates of the motor, it identifies that it's air over on this motor as well. It's identified as air over. It's an indication you're going to put a fan or a blower wheel on that. It has to be in the air stream of the motor to keep that cool. This motor has a lot of openings in it. This motor is an open motor, open air over. This motor does not have openings in it. This is totally enclosed air over. Now if we look at these two motors, at these two general purpose motors, you'll see that this particular motor also has openings in it. That is called an open motor. This particular motor has no openings. There is a fan in the back end of it that moves air over that to keep it cool. This is a totally enclosed fan-cooled motor. If I were to look at the openings on this, there are openings all over on every side of this particular motor. On this motor, the openings are only at the bottom and at the back. With this particular motor, more specifically, it's called an open drip proof motor, or ODP. That implies that if anything were to drip on this motor, if condensation were to drip on this motor, it's not going to get into the windings of the motor and cause a problem. With an air over motor, they're designed electrically a little bit differently than what the general purpose motors are. Again, they have to have air going over it to keep it cool. The amount of air that goes over that motor is determined by the load that is put on the motor. If the motor is a half horsepower motor, for example, there's going to be a half horsepower of air moving over that motor to keep it cool. Whether it's an open motor or a totally enclosed motor, if they're both half horsepower, it's still going to be a half horsepower of air going over those motors to keep them cool. When you select replacements for the air over motors, in order to get the proper torque of that motor, in order to get the proper horsepower, the most accurate way to select the replacement is by using amps. If you look at the amp rating on the motor, now in this motor, this is a multi-horsepower motor, and there are different amp ratings. This can be used as a replacement for a motor that's within the amp range. Well, what's the amp range? If this is the motor I'm replacing, the replacement motor should be equal to the nameplate amps on that motor that's failed, but no more than 25% stronger to replace that motor. On this motor, there's one amp rating that we're looking at based upon the voltage that we select. But if we're replacing a motor that is two amps, again, the bad motor is two amps, the new motor should be two amps, but no more than 25% stronger than that. Now the reason that you don't want to put a stronger air over motor in the application 
is because if you do, there may not be enough air going over that motor to keep it cool. So it's got to be matched within that certain range. It's different on general purpose motors. I'm not going to use the amps when looking for replacements on the general purpose motors. On the general purpose motors, I'm going to use the horsepower. So if we look on this motor, this is rated 5 horse. But there's another consideration that I have to take into account. Not only the horsepower, but I have to look at something called service factor. Service factor is a multiplier. If I multiply the service factor times the horsepower, it gives me the actual total horsepower of load that that motor can operate. Well, why would they do that? On the air over motors, those motors are typically designed for a very specific performance range. But on the general purpose motors, I can use those motors for a much wider range. If I run this motor with no load on it, it won't hurt the motor because it's not dependent upon air to keep it cool. But if I run these motors with no load on it, there would be no air going over the motor to keep it cool and it could damage the windings of that motor. So when replacing a general purpose motor, you always have to take into account what the horsepower and service factor was on the bad motor and make certain that the replacement motor is at least as strong as horsepower times service factor from that old motor. On this motor, it also has service factor. It has horsepower and service factor shown on this. So the same consideration must be taken into account. This is a seven and a half horsepower, 1.15 service factor. Now there's something a little different on these motors in terms of their size as well. If we look at the frame size of these motors, these motors will say 48 frame. But these motors have different numbering system in the frame size. On these motors, the frame size of the motor is a standard. It's a standard characteristic, a standard that is developed by an organization called National Electrical Manufacturers Association. If I look at the frame size on this, on this particular motor, We'll see that the frame size is a 184T. When I see that T at the end of it, that tells me this is standard. Now what's standard about it? Well, there are three numbers in this frame size, 1, 8, and 4. The first two numbers if I were to take that number, in this case it's 18, and I divide that number by 4, my result would be the shaft height of the motor. And the shaft height is me measured from the bottom of the base to the center of the shaft. If I look at this motor, the frame size is a little different than on that motor. This motor is a 213T. So if I were to measure the shaft height of this motor, I'd take 21 divided by 4, and the center height of that shaft is going to be a little bit different than it was on this motor. When I replace a 213T motor with another 213T motor, that shaft height's the same on both those motors. My shaft diameter is going to be the same on those motors. There are other characteristics that are also associated with that frame size, and that has to do with the mounting of those motors. So all T 
13T frame motors will have the same distances on their mounting holes in this direction and also from side to side, which makes it easy then to replace those motors by looking at the frame sizes. Now, there are some things that could vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, even though their frame sizes are the same. The size of the connection box could be different from manufacturer to manufacturer. Some might stick out a little bit more. Some may be a little more flattened to the side of the motor, maybe wider or narrower. And some motors may be longer than other manufacturers' motors, even though they have the same frame size. But the difference from the mounting, front mounting holes to the shaft is the same on all of those motors. So you just need to be aware if one motor is larger than another in terms of length, that it's going to be able to fit into the, the application that you have. Now the location of the connection box on the motor can also vary. And there's a designation for that. If we were to look at this particular motor, this is considered an F1 connection box. F1? Well, there's also an F2 and an F3. Well, what does that mean? If you were to look at the motor from the shaft end of the motor, with an F1, the connection box, is on the left. If it were F2, looking from the shaft end of the motor to the box, the box would be on the right. In F3, the box would be mounted on top. And sometimes that can be critical for your applications. So where do these things go? What are the applications for these bigger motors? Well, in heating, air conditioning, refrigeration, this is all we see, isn't it? Oh, no. No, there are some big blowers out there. There are some big applications that require a lot of horsepower. So we'll see a lot of these in, in some of the commercial applications that are out there, and some of the refrigeration applications. So even though those motors look different, and we have to select them a little bit differently. If you understand a few of the basics, it makes it a little bit easier to make sure you're selecting the right motor, whether it be an air over motor or general purpose motor. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Come back to Packard Academy. Uh, check in, see what other videos we have online. Thanks.